Okay, everyone. So um, in this video here, I just want to share with you um, as part of this as part of this live stream series that I'm doing with all the gear and how I'm kind of running backing tracks and doing my live stream setup for live performance. This video is a little bit about the backing tracks, and I just want to share with you my thought process. And again, there's many ways to do this, but what we're looking at here is Ableton Live. So I run all of my backing tracks in Ableton Live, and you may say, well, why why Ableton Live, Dave? Why not? just do it in Studio One or any other DAW. And, and although you can, let me kind of explain why why I'm using Ableton Live and how I kind of came to this point. So when I first started to say I wanted to do live streaming performance and playing where I'm playing with backing tracks, which is something was something new to me, having just me playing acoustic, my bass player playing bass, us both singing background vocals and a lead singer. Um, and now having playing with backing tracks to have drums, percussion, keyboards, things that we don't have as a trio, um, I started the search of trying to find, well, how am I going to do this? Because I've never done it before. So the first, and we're going to do cover tunes for the most part, almost all cover tunes. And so the first thing I did was got on Google and started searching, you know, backing tracks and backing tracks for bands and multi-tracks and stuff. And I didn't want to just get a karaoke track, a stereo karaoke track because that really doesn't work because we want to play live instruments. We just don't want to remove the vocals. And I wanted more control over than just getting a stereo track with some of the instruments removed. I wanted to be able to add and take away the instruments as needed um, and have more control over it. Um, and I didn't want to, at least at first, didn't want to write all the music and program all the music myself, which I could have done with software drums. I could have played all the bass parts. I could have played all the electric guitar parts. I could have played the piano parts and I could have done this all myself, but I wanted to get up and running quickly. So I started to search around Google, not knowing anything about backing tracks other than a few things that I saw on YouTube. And there's a couple of websites I want to share with you where I found my backing tracks. Now you can, you can, you can do this all yourself, but let me bring up Google here. And there were three sites that I had found. Um, the first one I found was this site called Jam Kazam. And Jam Kazam has a little utility software where you can um, download the software for free and you can buy backing tracks for as little as $2.99. And you can, you know, every famous artist under the sun, they'll have all of their hits, mostly huge library of songs where you can buy the stem files. Okay, so you're really buying MP3 stem files um, of the song. Um, and then from there, I don't know if I'm logged in here, um, because I'm doing this on another computer, but basically what you do is you'll sign up, you download this thing, you'll sign up for free. Um, and then you search their database and you can either use their software as like a little multi-track mixer and then mix the version of the song you want, or you can download the song in stem files, drums being just one stem. You're not going to get multi-track drums, but you're going to get a drum stem bass, guitars, backing vocals, lead vocals, and anything else that's a part of that um, particular song. Everything from Frank Sinatra to Metallica to the Black Crows to Fleetwood Mac to Bruno Mars to Adele to Britney Spears and everything in between. They have a lot of stuff here. So this is a cool website for you to check out if you want to take the stem files and build them into either Ableton or another DAW and you want to just get the stems and you want to build your own tracks, this is a great site because it's affordable. $2.99 a song, you get all the multi-tracks here. So check this out. I'll put the links in the description. This is Jam Kazam, I think you say. Jam, no, Jam, yeah, jamkazam.com. So I, I checked out this site and I didn't buy anything from this site right away, but this was one thing that I did buy some tracks a little bit later, which we'll talk about. The other site that I looked at was an, uh, a site called Song Galaxy. Again, very similar. This is your uh, European company um, where you can buy the stem files. Um, they have their own little version of their software. There's a little YouTube video here and how it works with their software. But once again, you can just download the audio files in MP3 format. Again, they have a lot of the same artists, all the famous artists, thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. You can buy the stem files and you can load them into your DAW of choice. Or if you're an Ableton user, you could bring them into Ableton yourself. Um, again, this is a um, you know, very affordable way to do it. And again, songgalaxy.com is another site that you can check out. But I also found this site, and in the, in the one site that I found, and this is what turned me on to Ableton, to be honest with you, is a site called BackingTracks.com. Um, and this is a really good site. And if you're new to backing tracks, especially if you're new to Ableton and you want to run backing tracks in Ableton like I did, um, this is a great site to check out. This guy's name is Victor. He's a great guy. I've met him on the phone. We've talked about some stuff from him. 
Um, and he's the one, when I stumbled upon here, he's the one that kind of turned me on to using Ableton and showed me or showed, you know, how he uses Ableton Live to run backing tracks. And this is what made me decide to go with Ableton. Because not only does he have some training on Ableton and how to use the backing tracks, but he also makes a lot of pre-made um, Ableton song files with all the backing tracks already loaded in, which I'm going to show you in a second. So you don't have to do any of the work. Unlike just buying the stems and then you creating your own song file in Ableton or Studio One or Pro Tools or whatever to run your backing tracks, he's already done the work for you and he's going to give you when you buy it, um, an Ableton Live file, which has everything already loaded in. So all you have to do is hit play and you're playing along with your song. So he has everything from pre-made Ableton tracks, tens, I think 50,000 songs, some ridiculous number like that. 900, so you can, and he has different packages. So you can buy six songs that are already pre-made in the Ableton Live format for 59 bucks. The more you buy, the cheaper they get per song. Okay. And he has uh, 900 plus songs of previously made backing tracks that he's done for other clients. So let's say you wanted to buy, and again, you can, and you can see down here, he has the track layout. You're not only going to get the Ableton file, but you're going to get all the stems for it. So you're going to get a click track, a cue track, drums, percussion, bass, keyboard, so on and so forth. And here's his list of his 900 plus songs, and they're all in alphabetical order. And again, all the hits. I bought lots of them this way. So when I first stumbled upon Victor's site, I said, okay, I watched some of his tutorials and he has a master class on Ableton and how to use Ableton, which I took. I think his class was $99 um, to learn how to use Ableton because I was completely unfamiliar in how to do this with backing tracks. So I learned that from him. And then I bought, I think, four or five songs, pre-made songs for 60 bucks just to see how it would work. And he sent it to me right away. He's a really reputable guy. Um, I highly recommend this guy here, Vic Backing Tracks Custom. Dot com. And again, all the links will be in the description box below. You can peruse the site and see what you're going to get. And what he would send you when you get the tracks is he would send you an Ableton Live file. Here's an Ableton Live session. Now, this happens to be a master session with all of my backing tracks that I've kind of compiled into one. But he would send you, let's say you bought, you bought four songs from him. He would send you a file that looks just like this with, let's say, the top four songs in it. So you'd have the first, the top four songs in there, the rest of it would be blank and everything would be preloaded in. Okay. So it was easy. It was plug and play right away. So now you may say, well, again, why Ableton Live? Well, Ableton Live um, is like a lot of other DAWs, but what's unique about Ableton Live is that you have really two kind of main um, uh, ways of using it. You have a... Um, um, a view, they call them views. You have a view called session view, which is what you're looking at here. Session view is unique compared to any other DAW in that you have a bunch of clips or a bunch of files and you can just play them from top to bottom. So for in other words, here's the first song here. The first song that we have here um, is Closing Time by Semisonic. So you have the master scene here and you hit this little play button and you'll hear the click. Intro, breakdown, three, the cue. Four. And then you'll start to hear the song of the backing tracks. Okay, now in this scene, you can see across the top here, we have a count-in over in here in the far left. This is the count-in, um, you know, which is the cue track, the intro, two, three, four. You have a click. You have an other column. Again, this is Victor's kind of template. So anytime you buy anything from him, it always kind of matches this exact template. So if the song has something that doesn't fall into the other main categories, it would be under other. This song doesn't, but you can see as we scroll down, each one of these lines, each one of these rows is a different song. So this song here by the Romantics, What I Like About You, has a harmonica solo here in the center. So he put it under other. But you have drums, percussion, a bass track, a keyboard track, horns, Guitar track one, backing vocals, lead vocals, and another guitar track. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten audio tracks, a click track eleven, and the cue track twelve. So everything always comes from him in twelve tracks. Every all his multi tracks, all his songs are are compiled down to twelve tracks to make it manageable. Okay, so when you buy a template from him, that's how you have you can use it. Now you can add as many tracks as you want. We'll get into that in a bit. But what's great about this session view is when you buy, when you set it up, these are all just separate MP3 files. And you can see the play button near all of them. Now you can just launch uh, the drum. You can hit play in any one of these. Intro. And the song is going to play. Four. 
okay, which is really cool. And then when you go to the next song, here's Rocket Man by Elton John. I hit play. The tempo Verse, changes. Two, three, four. She my back. Okay. So this one, you can see Rocket Man, Elton John, 68 beats per minute, closing time semi-sonic up here, 92 beats per minute. When you put the beats per minute in the actual master um, scene here, it will actually, Ableton Live will do the tempo change for you, which is really cool. And basically what you do is you just load up all of your backing tracks into this session view and you can rearrange them in any order you want. You can just left click and just drag them and everything switches. And then you can just play your set from top to bottom. Okay, really simple. So it's this is called session view and it's done with clips. Each one of these little individual boxes in the middle of the screen here under the under the particular columns is called a clip over here under the master is called a scene so when i bought those tracks from custom backing tracks this is what he sent me but like i said i bought four songs so there was only the first four songs were populated the rest of it was blank okay and what makes this kind of nice is towards the bottom here you have a little mixer again it doesn't look as intuitive or as modern as say studio one or pro tools but it works um, but what I like about this view, this use running backing tracks in the session view um, as well, is let's say on the first song, um, you want your, um, you want, you don't need your backing vocals. You don't need the, you don't need the tracks backing vocals because your band members are going to sing backing vocals. So you come over to the backing vocals column. And if you come down to the fader and you were to change the volume down here, not only is that gonna change the backing vocal for that one song, but every other song that's in your list, which may not be desirable. Maybe there's certain songs you want background vocals, certain songs you don't want background vocals. Okay, so what you would do in that case, in the backing vocal, let's say for Elton John, we don't want the backing vocals. I just highlight this, you can see the little square that comes up around it, double click. And now here is just the background vocal file, audio file for that one song, and there's a fader over here. And I'll try to make sure I zoom up in editing here so you can see it. See, I can close this up or down. So if I don't want anything for Elton John backing vocals, I can just turn it all the way down to zero. So now I'm just turning down the individual fader for that one track inside of that one song. Does that make sense? Turn this back up a little, okay? And then I can clear it out here. As opposed to using the master fader, which will turn down the backing vocals for every song. Okay, so inside of Session View, you not only have it really easy with just clips and you can just play the set from top to bottom, but then you can also control the individual volumes and you can kind of pre-mix, if you will, each individual song so everything kind of sounds like it's at the same level. And then when you X, when you go out of this into your mixer, which is our studio live, which is in another video, everything comes out the PA in, a, in the way you want. So the first song volume wise sounds relatively close to the song, second song volume wise, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a quick, and for what I've learned, really the beginner's way to start running backing tracks. Okay, now, if you wanted to not buy the template, and let's say you just wanted to make stems, you wanted to just buy the multi-tracks, you wanted just the audio files from Jam Kazam or Song Galaxy, you can import those clips right into Ableton without having to have somebody pre-make them for you. It's a lot cheaper to do that. Okay, a lot cheaper for you to do that. And in the next video, I will show you how to do that. I have some of those were just multi-tracks and I'll show you how to set this up. But this is how I started it. Went, bought backing tracks, came over here, and over time I bought a lot of those from Victor and he would start sending me individual files and then I would copy and paste those files into what I have here as a master template. So these are all of my backing tracks that I've purchased from uh, backingtrackscustoms.com from Victor. Okay, tons of songs, I think there's 50 or 60 at this point. Okay, so that's the quick way to do that. Now, the other way that you can use Ableton Live, which is where more of the advanced people that actually know Ableton well and actually run backing tracks a lot, and I'm just starting to get into this, it's just got my feet wet, easy way to run backing tracks, so on and so forth. If you wanted to do this in like something like Studio One, it's not as confined and as easy as this, okay? And I'm gonna show you in a second. So the second way that you can run Ableton which is really common to the way you would run any other DAWs in what's called arrangement view. So if I hit the tab key, this brings me to arrangement view. Now arrangement view looks very similar to any other DAW. You have a timeline, okay, over here on the left, and then the only difference is the tracks are labeled on the right-hand side. We're typically in Studio One or Pro Tools, you know, where you have up at the top here, your click track, your, 
your others, your drums, all your tracks would normally be on the left and it would run left to right. Ableton's a little backwards. All the tracks are on the right hand side. Okay. But as you can see, there are no audio files here. Okay. There are no audio files in arrangement view. Okay. Right now, if I hit tab and I go back to clip view, all my files are here. Okay. They're not in arrangement view, but what you can do is you can bring those audio files from clip view into arrangement view and have it look like a typical uh, DAW, okay? Um, and when you do that and you use arrangement view, what's really nice about arrangement view is then you can also add other things, automation inside of Ableton Live, like for running your light rig, for example. I have a secondary program that integrates beautifully with Ableton Live called Light Key. And Light Key is where you have a, a MIDI track and you can program light changes, light cues, and we'll do that in another video where the program um, works perfectly with Ableton Live, but you need to be using running your tracks in arrangement view, not in session view. You can't automate the lights. At least I haven't figured it out by running it in this way. So you would run it in arrangement view. So what you would do in essence is you would bring the audio clips, which we'll do in the next video. You'd bring them into arrangement view and it would look just like any other DAW. So you'd have your first song, maybe from measure one to measure 41 or bar one, the bar 41 would be all the multi-tracks for your first song. Then maybe there'd be a two or three second gap. And then you'd have your second song, your third song, and it would run from left to right in a timeline, one song after another, much like a live recording. When you record your band live and you record all the raw tracks and you go in and you slice it up. So you have one song, two songs, three songs, four songs, same thing. When you do an, an arrangement view, now you're playing everything from this typical DAW look. And then we can add MIDI tracks, as I said, to do lighting cues. So it's in time with the music and the songs. You can do things like run, um, if you have multiple cameras for a live stream, you can have the cameras change in Ableton Live. Um, if you have like a visual screen behind you and you had some visual effects or lyrics or whatever, kind of like karaoke, that all can be done right from the arrangement view in, in Ableton Live. Can that be done in Studio One and Pro Tools and Cubase? Yes, but it's a lot more involved from what I'm figuring out. Ableton Live was really built for that, hence the name Ableton Live. Although I've seen people do things in Pro Tools, but it's a lot more programming. This is a lot more uh, drag and drop type of a thing. Okay, so for this video, I just wanted to introduce you to Ableton Live and kind of tell you why I picked Ableton Live for my setup. And again, it really had everything to do with this session view, because I was brand new to Ableton. I didn't want to get into arrangement view yet. I just wanted to have my songs on the right hand side that I, can, that I can put in any order that I want. Hit the play button. Intro, breakdown, three, four. And now we got Crocodile Rock by Elton John. And then I want to go to the next song and I want to play a Tom Petty tune. Intro, breakdown. And now we have American Girl by Tom Petty. And I didn't want to have to do any of the tempo changes. I didn't want to have to figure anything out in arrangement view like a typical DAW. I just wanted to plug and play. But I still wanted to have some of the same multi-track control over the individual tracks or clips from one song to another, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm learning about Ableton Live. Now that I'm getting more into this, and I'm going to show you in the next couple of videos how I program my lights and stuff, now I'm starting to learn about arrangement view and what I'm, what I'm actually in the middle of a project. Again, I'll shoot another video to show you part of this, is I'm actually now taking all these individual songs and I'm actually getting them into arrangement view. Every single song is going to have its own Ableton file. So you'll only see the top song, everything else will be blank and all those files will not only be here, the clips will not only be here, but they'll also be in arrangement view as well. So I can then program all my lights, program all my camera changes or any other automation I wanna do. And if I have 50 songs, I will in essence have 50 um, Ableton Live session files, just like a Studio One file. And then I can create a master set list and I can drop or drag and drop all of those individual songs into my set list depending on what songs we want to play for that particular show. 
Okay, so that is the introduction in my kind of show you my first look at Ableton Live. I'll do another video here in a second where I take you a little bit further what else I'm doing with Ableton Live. Again, you can always go check out those two, uh, two or three custom backing track websites um, if you want to get tracks up and running really quickly. Um, all three of them are good, but I, if you want to just get up and running really quickly, especially if you're new to Ableton, I would, um, I would encourage you to check out custom backing tracks with Victor because. Um, he breaks the free tutorials he has, and if and he even decide to take his master class, is able to master class, which is about I don't know ten videos. I think it's ninety nine bucks, but it's well worth it, especially if you're a beginner. He'll get you up and running with this stuff very very quickly. That's how I learned it, and I knew nothing about Ableton. And you can buy a couple of tracks from him to get yourself started. And once you get your feet wet in Ableton, you'll be able to start to learn it and figure out well what else is possible and what else can you do that takes you beyond the basics. And that's what I'm going to be showing showing you in the next few videos because that's what I'm starting to learn now too because I'm starting to get better at Ableton Live as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, click all the links in the description box below. Let me know what you think and if you use Ableton and uh, what do you do for your live streaming or what do you think about this video? Um, again, I'll be doing more as part of this series and I'll see you guys uh, soon. Okay, thanks. Take care.